All right, folks, we're getting close here. We've done start to finish. We've talked about all the variables, all the important mm -hmm. decisions. And now we're sitting here with five pieces of brass, five casings that are a 308, like we're trying to get to here with the 165 Acubon. Mm -hmm. And you're going to set up this bullet seating machine is what a novice is going to call it. What's it really called, Dakota? Yeah, we'll set up this RCBS seat die that's for it. This is just a traditional a RC. seat die. It's a seat I die. I call it a bullet yep. seating machine. There yep. you go. See? 308 Winchester bullet seat die. All right. So, and when you do that, we're going to go through the process of getting the bullet seated at the correct depth. Mm -hmm. Correct depth is explained in the reloading guide. Yeah, yeah, we've got called out where we tested all of our accuracy loads and pressure loads in that manual. Um, and also Sammy has a cartridge overall max dimension, which is 2.810 for the 308 Winchester. And we're just short of there. I think today we're going to be seating at uh, 2.800. Okay. So I was watching you mess around with that mm -hmm. machine, whatever it does. The press, press. There, yeah. And earlier when you were showing me how things work, mm -hmm. you were starting to see the bullet to a certain depth and then you would measure it with your micrometer. Yeah, that's and correct. And then you'd tweak the, mm -hmm. the die, is that what it's called? Yeah, you have a seat stem that runs down the top and then you actually have your lock ring that's down right. here on the bottom on the threads. And that determines how, because this will push the bullet up into there. That's correct. And you that will determine when the bullet gets pushed up so, and the case gets pushed mm -hmm. up, and they, they both get pushed up together, It the bullet hits and then the case slides up around the bullet. That's correct. That's yeah, the bullet comes to in stop that. up in, in uh, up in the top of the seat stem. There's a shape that is the ogive of the bullet that it rides on that supports it, centers it, and then pushes it down into the neck as the neck comes up on it. And yeah. so this is where you adjust that depth of yep. how far up the case will come. Yeah, this is where your final adjustment is made. Um, there's a little bit more to setting up these dies to make sure you're not actually crimping on these because they do have a crimp built in if you okay. choose to use it. In this case, we're not going to. It's going in your bolt rifle. Okay. So the way I set up uh, dies to start with, they come out of the box, the lock ring's loose on them, and then mm -hmm. the top will usually be loose as well. Okay. So. What I'll do is I'll take a piece of my brass yep. that I know is already at minimum length because these are trimmed brass by us, so right. this is near minimum. So what you're going to find is as you shoot it, the brass is going to grow in length. So mm -hmm. we need to accommodate for that. So I'll take it and run it all the way up in here. Yeah. And then you can screw your die directly down on top of it. Okay. Hold your lock ring up and you'll come all the way down until you actually make contact with the top of that brass. That's where it stopped. It's hitting okay, the top so of the brass. Okay, so as you were screwing that down in there, all of a sudden it's like, boom, you hit yeah, the brass. Yeah, you're, you're stopping right there. Okay. And if, if you were, I mean, you can see if I take the cartridge down or the piece of brass down, you can now go down further. further. So it was actually riding on the top of the brass there. And what you want is I'll usually run them about two revolutions out from there. So, so you go and hit it, mm -hmm. and then you'll come back two revolutions. That's correct, yep. So I'll, I'll hit it there, and then just kind of put a, a mark on it where you actually started, and then come back out about two revolutions. Okay. And that'll give you enough seat stem depth to get your bullet seated to the correct length, but it also backs your die body off far enough that you're not crimping, crimping if you brass. don't trim your brass. From this point, now that I'm locked there, I'll bring my ring down, lock ring onto the yeah. top of the press and then there's a set screw on the side it's a brass guy now one little tip is before you tighten this all the way up because it rides on the threads loosen the whole assembly the ring and the die together yeah. and then tighten it and then okay. put it back in because oftentimes it'll lock the whole die together if you're not careful because okay. the pressure that this puts in puts it down onto the threads right. on there it takes the lash out so once you have the die body set to where you're not making contact and it's all the way down and locked then you have to set your seat stem on the top. Yeah, there's 42 grains of Varget in these, which is a starting load, and we're looking to seat 165 grain Acubond at a cartridge overall length of 2.800. Okay. So, and that's where we tested at, and we found that they like it there. Mm -hmm. So I would run it there. Um, I always make sure I'm backed out sufficiently far. If you're in doubt, back it out further. Okay. You know, it will stop at the top side up here. You can only go so far because it actually has this th threads from the other side and you have to push it all the way through to get it to come out. Got so it. I back it up and in to where it almost bottoms out. And then I'll take 
one of these bullets, 165 grain Acubond, and set it on there. I support it all the way up and into the into the die mouth to where you don't with get your finger. So, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly to where it doesn't tip sideways. Oftentimes, you'll find that you didn't have this seated down even far enough to catch it. Now, at this point, you can. Oh, it's just starting to catch it right there. Okay, but yep, you can bring it down on top of it. And I know that we're going to need to come quite a ways further, so I'll come down a pretty big amount to start with as I'm lifting this handle up. Right. As you're lifting yeah, that handle up, exactly. the, the shaft is dropping down, yep. allowing you to screw that down yep, better. Yep, absolutely And right. that's going to shorten your overall cartridge length. That's exactly what it's doing. So we'll, we'll seat one, see where we're at, and that's still long. So this guy's going to be roughly uh, 2.975. Oh, wow. So we're still 175 thou out. Right. And these threads that are on our CBS dies, it's roughly 30 thou per revolution. So if you okay. want just a rough count on there, you can get pretty close by running it as, as revolutions on there. So we'll go one, two, so there's 60 thou, three, so there we should be pretty close, right about there. And so you just twisted that. Yeah, to, I twist the to, lock nut down on there just as a, as a safety precaution to get kind of close. But right. in the meantime, we'll run that back up. And then we'll measure it right about there. Yep. Wow. Two eight. This not my first. You've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you use, it's actually a pretty accurate trick if you know where the right. die adjustment is on the top. Okay. Um, but oftentimes it's it's easier to come in smaller amounts and then reseat and measure to yep. get to where your dimension is rather than coming in all the way because if you go too far then you're going to have to either use an impact puller or right. yeah Extract call it puller bullet. exactly yeah right. if you're going to be consistent with it so once we've got that set what i like to do that's a, a handy tip um, if you're going to use this for a lot and you're going to set it and forget it you can lock that lock nut down with a pair of pliers but what i'll do is i'll take the lash out of the threads which yeah. is by using the bullet itself, the force that's up in there, and then twist the nut on the top by hand. Mm -hmm. And that gives you enough for what we're working with. I may need to come back and adjust this in you know, another five bullets or 10 bullets. So right. if I was gonna know that this was my seat depth, I'd lock that lock down. Yeah. So there's a loaded cartridge, and we'll continue on to the next one. Now here's one more thing that you know, some people say is, is important, some people say it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. I've seen run out numbers, which is how much run out from center line your projectile has. So if you measure basically on a V block, the bullet itself, how much wobble it has yeah. out here. There's one little trick that people have showed me over the years that when you seat your bullet and run it up in there, if you bring it tight, just seat it in there, just a tiny mm -hmm. bit to where you can feel the heel of the bullet go into the mouth, drop it back down, rotate it. Some people do it two, some people do it three times. So but if you rotate it, then if it is at a slight angle by rotating it, it's going to compensate it each time you rotate that. That's exactly that. right. Yeah. With that one, where did we come out on that one? Let's take a look. Wow. There it right is. Right there. Yep. Too late. <laughs> Not yep. that I don't trust you. I was just... <laughs> Curious. I mean, I'm, I'm, you've got me trained in this consistency idea here. Yep. It's one of the things that it, once you build the habit, it's a lot easier to do it, you know, as a repetitious motion. So yeah. I try to keep them all consistent the way I do it every time. So will you do a whole batch of these and then you'll, you'll measure all of them when you're done? Or Typically do you... I measure the first couple that come off there. And if the die is set correctly, you're absolutely good to continue on. And what you'll see on, on polymer tip bullets or lead tip bullets, there will be a little variation in the tip length itself. Um, okay. Usually one or two thou on there. Okay. Lead bullets, the nose, if it's lead, can be more just because they get impacted right. or kind of mm -hmm. misshapen a little bit. Um, and there's some different techniques we can talk about at some time too on how to measure off of the ogive of the projectile versus the tip and what's called a base to bore measurement. Okay. So, and you can get more specific about that. And, and uh, For me, let's keep it easy. Okay. That sounds good to me. <laughs> so once again, I'll seat once and then rotate, seat again. And there it is. There's five pieces of uh, loaded 308, 165 Acubons. Ready to go and kill elk. It's going to happen. Anyhow, folks, thanks for watching this. We're going to follow up with some videos that we're really going to let Dakota get down in the weeds in some of these other videos. Some of you people who've been following along might have said, oh, that's pretty basic. Well. 
we're not going to be too basic once we let Dakota loose here because he, I can tell he's got tons of information he wants to share and you're going to want to watch it. Thanks for watching.